Hello, and thanks for joining me today on my channel. I'm Julie, and this is Stamp with Julie Baum. Today, I'm going to be showing you a fun project that is actually an easel card, and it's also a gift card holder. Now, this is not a project that we made at Stamp Club this past week, but it is a card that I showed um, just as a sample, and of course, it got a lot of attention, and I was asked to make sure and do a video on how to make this project. So this is a different version of one that I showed. I'm gonna show you at the end um, the first one that I made, and that one was cased from a project I had seen. This became my second option. This was another version, and then we're gonna create from scratch a third look, all right? So on this one, let me show you how the card opens, but it also pops up like an easel card. So that's how it would sit on someone's desk or um, uh, shelf or nightstand. And then the little gift card slips right into this pocket right here. So this is one of the versions and this one I made because I wanted to show you how you could stamp the coffee mugs and then die cut them and use them on the project. So that's how I did this one. Also using just a simple set of circle punches to create my little um, focal point where my words are, as well as the little part here that actually serves as the easel, all right? But on the card that I'm gonna make right now, this is um, more closely related to the one that I showed at Club, and this involves using a lot more designer series paper. So let's get started with our project. So for this project, I recommend that you do a bunch of your stamping and die cutting ahead of time. And that way, when you're ready to assemble the card, it'll go together pretty quickly. And so what I have here are several cut out little lattes. And what I want to show you is this is actually right from a sheet of the designer series paper. So you can see here, I just took some scissors and cut out a chunk. And then from that piece, you can either die cut or fussy cut. So let me show you. This was that chunk that I cut out of the designer series paper. And then you can use the die that comes in the coordinating dies. This is the Latte Love stamp set, and it does have coordinating dies. So you can either use the die to cut out all of your little latte pieces, or you can simply fussy cut these out. So it's up to you. Um, this particular time, because I was using quite a few that are whole images, I did use the die and cut those out. But as I'm going to show you, one beautiful thing about this project is that you're gonna use some of those edge pieces that normally you would think are kind of wasted because what are you gonna do with you know, two thirds of a coffee mug? But what's nice about this particular project is we're gonna use those pieces. So since I said that, I'm just gonna quickly take my paper snips, fussy cut this one out, because we'll use this on the card or a piece just like it. So what I love is you're not just able to use up the full images from the piece of designer series paper, but even these little edge pieces that otherwise would be completely wasted. All right, let me trim that out a little bit better. So again, you can fussy cut these cups out or you can use the die and cut them out still, even if you're only using a partial image. Okay, so that's step one, is getting a bunch of pieces that are going to be usable, ready to go. All right, now another thing that I wanted to point out is there's a circle die that comes as part of that set, and when you cut the circle out, it will fit right here into the latte. So this is gonna come in handy. I think that this one, see how these, these ones have like the latte art and this one doesn't really. So I'm gonna choose that one that's a little bit more plain and I'm going to use this circle to cover that up and we're gonna do some stamping on that. 
Okay, now the other little parts that I've already prepared are my coffee beans. So just on some plain white cardstock like this, you can do your stamping of your coffee beans. So there's, here, this one's better. So there um, is the little cluster of beans and this is with early espresso ink. And then you might also want some of the single beans like so. Now, I think that these look um, really good when they're colored in with the dark pumpkin pie Stampin' Blend. And so you can quickly fill those in if you are a coffee drinker and you're really into coffee, so you pay attention to the beans and where they are grown and how they are roasted. This is definitely a medium or a dark roast bean. You could also color the beans with the light pecan pie marker um, and then your beans will just have a lighter roast look. Isn't that fun? Okay, so this is what I did ahead of time. I stamped my beans, the little clusters, also the single, and then I die cut a bunch of those. All right, now the dies that come in the stamp set um, are pretty handy because there's two that will cut out the clusters. So you can cut two out at a time. And there are three of the single bean that will cut three single beans out at a time. Now you can see this die is very small and kind of fussy to work with. So um, you might actually choose to just fussy cut your single beans out, but you can see it lines up very nicely. You might need a little bit of artist tape or um, some post-it tape to hold it in place so that it doesn't slide when you go to die cut it. All right, so all of those have been pre-done to save some time. And those are right here. Here's all my little beans, okay? All right, so there's a bunch of parts. We'll do the rest as we complete the card, and um, but that's gonna save us some time from me having to go off camera and do any die cutting. All right, for your card base, um, you're gonna need a piece that is four and a quarter by 11 inches. On my other two examples, I use pecan pie. On this particular example, I'm doing it with early espresso. Once you have your piece cut, you're gonna do a score at five and a half, and you're gonna do another score at two and three quarters. So that is what creates our easel fold. And that's our card base. Then I have a white piece of cardstock that is four inches by five and a quarter. This is going to be the inside panel. And by the way, our new basic beige cardstock and um, uh, ink color looks really, really good with all of this coffee theme stuff. So hindsight, this might have been very nice as a basic beige piece, but I'm gonna show you white because that's what I have done so far. All right, then I have some of our designer series paper, and I'm showing you on this um, tutorial some different papers, then you'll get to see a variety when I bring those other two cards back in. So you're going to need two pieces that are two and a half inches by four inches. So I've chosen these two. And then you're going to need a third piece that is two inches by four inches. Now what I've done on my card design is I choose to match Whichever piece is gonna go here, I've chosen to match that same print for the inside of the card. That way when the easel is like that, it coordinates. But you don't have to do that. This could be a different print. For instance, we could use the little latte art hearts on the inside and that would be super cute as well. So that's up to you, but I'm just showing you that for now, I'm gonna have those two pieces match and then this one just coordinates. All right, so let's begin putting our card together and then we can stamp a little and embellish as we go. So I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue, the green glue, 
and go ahead and attach this piece of my designer series paper to the front of the card base up here in this section. I'm going to also bring in that designer series paper so you can get a peek at it. Um, I showed you this print. There's a lovely white with coffee beans print. There's another print that has coffee mugs that you can um, fussy cut as well. And then we've got a splatter. We have this um, kind of pink and brown swirl paper. And then we have our orange with the white coffee beans. Then of course there's the flip side, which is gonna give you a dark and light swirl, um, a blue stripe, that little coffee or latte art with the hearts, um, some coffee mugs on a white background. I've used that as well as the plaid. And then look at the coffee rings and splatters. So amazing, amazing paper choices. This is a fairly new um, product suite and I'm, I have already purchased three packs of this 12 by 12 because I'm using it up just so quickly. You don't want to run out. Okay, I'll take my secondary piece here and go ahead and attach it. And then I showed you the scoring and the fold, but I have not yet used my bone folder and I do want to reinforce my creases. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I really want this to crease very well, as well as the fold of my card. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is plan our design with all of our little latte cups. So um, I recommend that you have at least two that are whole, okay, like these are whole images, and then you can have some parts and pieces. I'm going to save this one, as I said, which is a whole one, but that's kind of plain. I really like how cute those are. So this one's going to get covered up like that when we get to the inside of the card. All right, and then you're gonna start kind of playing with placement. And so I might want a blue one here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with it a little bit. If I do a Calypso Coral, and then a blue one, kind of like that. And it's fine if you go over your fold, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna stick up a little bit when your card is on the easel, um, is set up like an easel. And so that's gonna to be totally fine. And then maybe another one up here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang that off. I might actually cut that off. Um, by using two whole ones here, I don't really need to do a lot of fill in. This could actually come in up here and we could cut off edges. That would be super cute. So again, you're just kind of laying out your um, latte mugs to see where you want them. And you can decide if you want, like this one could come way over here and we could cut that edge off, which is actually what I might do. All right, so I've got an orange, a blue, a yellow, And then let's see if we end up using this other little part of the blue. And again, I'm going to show you that other card where I use um, even more pieces, but smaller pieces. All right, let's start gluing. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get this one in place since this one is going to go on top of it. And I am going to have some of those edges hanging off. So I figure out kind of where I need my glue. And let's get that one down in place. All right, now I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm gonna leave this, cause that looks good. It's gonna pop up above the line when it's an easel format. 
press that down and I'm just going to snip this off. Okay, so we've got that one. Now let's come back and put this one in its entirety. Now I'm going to make a little mention here. I'm not doing it on this card, but I have done it before. So let me mention when this is popped up, the little bit of background because our papers are two-sided is going to show. If for whatever reason that bothers you, what I have done is taken an image, glued it to a piece of white cardstock, then die cut it, and that way when it's on the back, it's plain white. So if that is something that you prefer, you can totally do that, and that's a good way around it if the back side of that showing is going to bother you. Okay, let's get another one on here. I think we'll do the yellow one. I kind of want my handles in different positions. So obviously that one's here. That one we cut off. This one, maybe I'll have sticking straight up like that. And that's going to work. And then I like the idea of this one. I'm gonna use the cut edge. It already was cut because that's where it sat on the paper. I'm gonna line that up with the edge of my orange paper. You see that? And I'm gonna cut this to be straight um, with that side of the orange. So I'm just gonna do it with my scissors. If, you, if that makes you nervous, you could draw a pencil line on here where you should cut it. I'll show you that because I know it's not fair to say it and then not show it. Okay, so watch. This straight edge is going along the orange straight edge, like so. This, I want to be a nice straight edge. So I'm going to be cutting that blue mug right at the edge of this orange paper. So you can eyeball it or you can make a mark and then cut on your pencil mark. You see what I'm, see what I'm getting at here? Okay, now we can glue that into place. And I've got a right angle right there and across the top of the orange paper. There we go. Okay, there's our cute row of drinks going right up the left side of the card. Then let's go ahead and put our words right here. And so I have done um, two different versions that I will show you. One with your the best part of my day and another one with thanks so much on the front. So let's do something different so you can see three versions. I have a scrap of white cardstock here and I am going to stamp, hello there, let's catch up. onto my white scrap. That E doesn't look inked very well. My um, block is very dirty. I probably should stop and clean it when I'm done here. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. I'm going to cut the edges off, so I don't need to worry about being right in this in the center between right and left. Okay. Oh, and I got a smudge there, which doesn't matter because we're cutting that off. All right, so I'm going to take some scissors. I'm going to use large ones because this is a pretty big piece. I also feel like it's a little bit too wide, so we're going to trim it down with our paper trimmer. Let's do that first. Sometimes it's easier to stamp on a larger piece and then trim it down instead of trying to stamp perfectly on a tiny pre-trimmed piece. Okay, so let's trim this down a bit. Mm. 
both above and below my words. Yeah, that's going to be better. And then I'm going to do my angle just with some scissors. matches. Oh, I can hardly see what I'm doing. The sun coming through my window is very nice. It's just right, but it kind of created a glare there. I couldn't see what I was doing. Okay, so there's the words, and these are going to go right here. Look how cute. We're going to have that popped up. Let's add some ribbon before we stick this down. So I really love this natural polka dot trim, which happens to go with this suite. So it was designed to coordinate. I'm going to cut two short pieces, maybe only about three inches long. And on um, a different card, I used the lemon lolly um, ribbon, which is beautiful with these products. And I also want to mention that the Lost Lagoon ribbon is beautiful with these projects, products and projects. All right, so we'll use the natural trim. I want an angle on the ends of each piece. And then we're going to have them just stick out a little bit. Remember, our words are going to go over it. We could also, mm, we could also go this direction, which I have not done. I'm creating on the fly here, which I kind of like right this minute. So I'm going to change my plan, which we're allowed to do when we're creating, right? I'm going to stick this down. I think that my stamp and seal plus will work well for this. All right, so this one with the little tail going down here and that one. So I need to trim this because I only want my tails, my ribbon showing below it. I don't know, that kind of looks cute popped up above it too though. Um, let's decide, it needs to be a little bit smaller for sure. Okay, we're gonna decide right here as we're creating if that one piece of ribbon is going to stay going up. I like it, except I don't like that it's not straight this way. So I'm going to try it. And if I don't like it, then I'm going to give up on my little freestyle here and just cover up the top. Oh yeah. See, that's better. All right. Let's just do it. Why not? You can always do it different the next time, right? So another little bit of Stamp and Seal Plus. Come on. Mmm. Why am I not getting it started? Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right, it needs another little bit up here to stick. And because it's the tiniest little area, I don't think I'm gonna have much luck getting my seal right there. So I'm just gonna grab a glue dot and stick it in there. This is what I get for going off my plan. Ta-da! 
Ta-da! See, and I cut it. Is this how you craft? <laughs> Having to keep fixing as you go. Like I said, this was not part of the plan A. So I need this angle to be off a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's move on. Now back to our words. I am going to add some dimensionals. To this guy I will use three if I really was worried about all of that I would edit this video and take all of that out but I am NOT going to worry about it it's important to see that sometimes as you're going along you change your plan and then you have to adjust okay there we go I'll add the words right there so that my one piece of ribbon is showing, but the other piece is tucked neatly underneath. And there's the front of the card. Okay, but this needs some of these coffee beans that we prepared. So I'm gonna just put one down here. Like so. And I'm going to put a cluster over here. like so. I love what the little sprinkle of coffee beans does. And I think we'll put one up here because when the card arrives, it's going to be flat like this. So maybe let's not ignore that spot right there. And then of course, when it's folded as an, e as an easel, that becomes the back. So at that point, it's not quite as important, but let's put one of the beans there. All right, let's finish the inside of our card. So the first thing I will do is get that white piece, our white panel attached to the inside. And then we'll deal with that last piece of designer series paper that we prepared ahead of time. This is the two inch by four inch piece. I am going to grab a circle punch, which um, you could do as I'm going to. If you don't have a circle punch, but you have these dies, remember there's a circle that you could use for this as well. But let me show you um, how I'm gonna do it with my circle punch. And this isn't absolutely necessary, but I do like a little thumb notch. If you're gonna tuck something in, a note or a gift card or something, I like a little thumb notch in there. I like how it looks and I think it's, um, uh, it also helps with being able to grab the insert out of there. I'm straightening out my grid paper because I am going to make a mark on here at the two inch mark, which is right in the middle. Um, of my four inches, so. I'm just using what's here. So I'm lay laying it down between three and seven, and so five is right in the middle. But you understand, this is a two inch mark right in the middle of my four inch piece of paper. Take any old, and this is an old one, um, circle punch or your die and just punch a little bite out of it. All right, as easy as that. And look, now we have that little notch, which I think is great. I'm going to glue this down. I wanna be sure and put just glue on the very outside edges, leaving me a big enough pocket for the gift card to fit in here. And also, I only want glue on the three outside edges not on the top edge where the card needs to go. So be careful that you don't glue your pouch shut. This lines up nicely right on the white piece. And again, we've left this edge unglued so that our gift card can fit right down in there. Okay, we need to finish a little something right here and preferably it should be popped up 
That way it will allow the easel card to sit just a little bit nicer. If it is attached flat, it will still work, but I do like to attach it with, um, with Stampin' Dimensional, so that's what we're going to do. Now, this is where this mug comes in handy. This is going to go right here. Ooh, it's almost too big for this space. There you go. And I'm going to stamp on this. This is gonna go here. And then we're going to pop this up with some dimensionals. So let's stamp. Because this is a gift card, um, I think it's appropriate to put this one's on me. I did a little test on that because it seemed a little ink heavy on the one side. Let's see if this works out better now. There we go. All right, this will get attached right in the center of my latte mug. That could be hot chocolate too, right? There we go, and a couple of dimensionals, as I said, on the back of this. I'm gonna go ahead and use three on this size circle. And now we're gonna put this right into place on the inside. Look how cute, this one's on me. and then my gift card is going to fit right down in there. Now, depending on what kind of gift card, um, because we did a coffee theme, I'm thinking coffee. So this is clearly going to be a Starbucks gift card or a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. Um, super, super cute. And then let's add another couple of beans in here. So I'll put a single one here and I'll put a cluster over here. Uh, here we go. There we have it. So with um, the only embellishments on this card being the beans and of course that flat ribbon, um, I kind of like it because this is, even though it's got some thickness to it, it's still gonna fit in an envelope really nicely. I suppose if you wanted to add some little swirl embellishments or rhinestones, that would be adorable too. But I'm going to leave this without adding any additional embellishments. Now, let me show you those other two cards just so you can see some variety, all right? So we have this one that we did in the tutorial. Let me move this out of the way also. I have this one that I showed you at the beginning. All right, so everything as far as dimensions is the same, the same size papers, the same that you need on the inside. It's just all about how you decorate it. So on this one, I had stamped and die colored and die cut three mugs and used them there. Here is a layered circle and a layered circle here. And you can see the difference in the papers too. And then this is the one that I cased from one that I saw. Um, changed it a teensy bit, but I wanted to show you this one as well because these papers are super cute too. And on this one, I definitely used um, a piece of a mug, a piece, a piece, and a piece. This one is the only full image, although it, you could get a away with if it had been cut off too. You just have to position it right. So I love that you're able to use the very, very edges of this paper right down to even that smallest one. Look right here. There's a tiny, tiny piece right there. And then this one pops up like so. And in this instance, I used a, a fussy cut mug from the other piece of designer series paper. So you have different views, different varieties, depending on which paper you want to use and how you want to decorate. And that 
is our project for the day. Thank you so much for paying attention and sticking with me. It's so much fun for me to share these projects with you. I will put some information for you below this video in the description box, including a current host code and also some purchasing information. If you don't already order your product through a demonstrator, I invite you to do that. I would love to help you and I'd love to point you to the direction of my online store. Until next time, happy stamping.